Uh, I want to take a look at the concept of energy in our mass spring system. As I said, regardless of whether we have a vertical or a horizontal one, with the vertical, we do not need to worry about the gravitational potential energy as long as we set the zero RP, as long as we talk about the equilibrium position where it would be at rest when it is hanging on the spring. So there are two types of energy. We have kinetic energy and elastic potential energy. The kinetic energy equals one half mass times velocity squared. We already have an equation for the velocity. It is um, a times a cosine of omega t plus phi, and we need to square that. So the kinetic energy is going to be one half times the mass times, well, the amplitude squared times, oh, we, might, we missed an omega, sorry about that, a squared times omega squared times the cosine uh, squared of omega t plus phi, just squaring everything that's in there. Uh, let's see, we also have elastic potential energy, which is one half k x squared. Again, we have, oh, you people gonna let me do this? You really gonna let me do that? It's sine. It's sine. It was negative. Something wrong with people who got paid attention. Negative. Yeah, sorry for that. So we get um, this ends up being sine squared. Okay, for position, we get a times a cosine of omega t plus phi which we are going to square. So we get 1 half times k times um, <clears throat> uh, times a squared times the cosine squared of omega t plus phi. All right. <clears throat> now, we know that omega squared, let's do it up here, is equal to k over f. So k is equal to m times omega squared. So I can substitute in for the spring constant here, m times omega squared. So this is 1 half m times omega squared times a squared times the cosine squared of omega t plus phi. Uh, this, the negative, we, we took the square, so the negative actually canceled out because we squared. Uh, actually, that's not what I want to do there. I want to go the reverse direction. Hold up just a second. K times a squared m omega squared. Oh, okay. I don't want to do that yet. Sorry. Let's do that in a little bit. <laughs> Sorry, I know. Not helpful. All right, so what we end up with now is the total energy is going to be equal to the kinetic energy plus the elastic potential energy. Or if you prefer, 1 half m times a squared times omega squared times sine squared omega t plus b. Plus. One half k uh, times a squared times the cosine squared of omega t plus phi. <laughs> now, this right here, if you recall, omega squared equals um, m over k. to omega squared times m. So we could substitute for omega squared times m in this equation. So it's 1 half times k squared 
times a squared times sine squared of omega t plus v. Plus 1 half times k times a squared times a cosine of omega t plus v. Wait, you want this case so zoom k would be rare. Thank you. So what we end up with is 1 half times k a squared times the quantity sine squared omega t plus phi plus cosine squared omega t plus phi. What's that? One. Wow. <laughs> In other words, the total mechanical energy equals one half k x or k a squared. <laughs> the total mechanical energy stored in a system is equal to, and it makes sense, 1 half kx squared, or ka squared. Uh, it's also equal to, in terms of the velocity, what? <coughs> total mechanical energy. Okay. If we have a mass spring system, which is going back and forth, Actually, it's all over here. We have a mass spring system that's going back and forth. Where <coughs> does it have the total mechanical energy equal to 1 half k a squared? What position? Slash positions. I would know. Well, actually, at all positions, yes. But the point is that we derive that from the fact we get it at positions 1 and 3, right? But where? Is all of the energy now as kinetic energy? At position two. So notice this is also equal to one half mass times velocity maximum squared, because that's where we have the maximum, um, the maximum linear velocity. 